In this second part of the Real Life Shape course, we'll see how we can utilize raster images to create the shape of a joystick for this command center seating design. The process we are going to show here is probably more common in terms of concept development, where we'll use 2D drawn projections as visual templates for making a 3D model. During this process we'll have a closer look at some more Real Life Shape tools such as Set Weight, Set Continuity and combine these Real Life Shape tools with some traditional CAD tools and some synchronous tools. We'll begin by isolating the joystick part added to the chair. Within this part I've wavelength in the cylinder from the seating to get a visual feel of how large the joystick should be. I've also prepared a couple of 2D drawing projections, and I'll add these using the raster image tool. This is located underneath the drop down menu with the datum planes, but it's also easily located by using the command finder in case you're having trouble finding it. I prefer using a PNG file for the raster images, but you could just as easily use a JPEG or TIFF if you prefer. In this dialog you can decide the size of your design, and that's where our cylinder is a good way of getting a feeling of how large it's going to be. If you got multiple raster images, remember to set approximately the same dimensions to them to keep the design consistent. We enter Real Life Shape mode and add a cylinder as a starting point. We'll also use symmetric modeling such that we only have to worry about one of the sides of our joystick. I use the projection views actively in the initial shaping process and typically start the design by dragging the basic shape to the design extremities. If you use the view option in the drag dialog, you can move any points, faces and edges freely, and it will move relative to how you look at your design. So since I'm looking at my model in the XY plane, this is also the plane that the nodes will move in. I proceed by splitting or subdividing the faces to trace the projection silhouette shapes. I'll speed this process up a little bit. You may find yourself struggling with low facet resolution, similar to those jagged lines right here. This is simply a default setting made to ease the workload for your computer, but for this design we can tolerate higher resolution to get better visual feedback during the shaping process. 
If you go to View and Preferences, you can change the faceting from Part to Fixed and increase the refinement factor. However, keep in mind that this may slow your computer if you're working with larger and more complex designs. Now back to our design. We need to soften up the edges at the top here. And for that we use Set Continuity and change this from Sharp to Smooth. However, it is a bit too smooth, but we can use the tool Set Weight to make the cage edges have a larger influence on the geometry. As I increase the weight here, notice how the geometry is closing into the cages, making a crisper, almost blend-like transition. I want to have this overall crisp appearance for the entire joystick, so I'll select some other edges as well. At this stage I'm feeling a bit more confident, so I don't use the raster images as much when I'm manipulating the cage. We add the base to the joystick simply by extruding the bottom profile. Now for a little more detail. I want to create an even crisper front end to my joystick. I'll start by subdividing the end face here and extruding this 0.5 cm inwards. I then use the drag tool and switch to transform and click the cage face. This transform option now allows me to scale the surface by manipulating the spheres you see in the coordinate system that appeared on the cage face. I'll scale it down in the x and y direction. Again I'll subdivide the face and this time I'll extrude it 0.5 cm outwards, which leaves me with this groove along the edge shape. I find myself satisfied with the shape in general, so I'll finish off by adding a couple of buttons on the top. For this I'll first draw a sketch using the top view. I then project this curve onto the geometry and extrude this with a small offset to give an impression that we got a button positioned here.
I'll use move face to give a subtle height to the button. And then copy this about the YZ plane. We'll finish off the detailing by adding some blends and maybe utilize the visualization tools to see how the surfaces flow. Going back to our seating design now, we can see that our joystick is positioned, but it feels a bit too small for our virtual guy. One thing we could do now is use the drag tool, use the transform option with the uniform scale to scale up the entire model. This does, however, mean that I must clean up the work I've done with my buttons. This may be the preferable way of cleaning up my design, but I could alternately just use scale body and scale it up to 120% of its original size, which seems to suit our virtual guy just fine. 